So the first artist we'll look at is Judith Brotman. And this is from a series of hers where she's doing this sort of beadwork on top of found photos. I'm not exactly sure what the source is for those photos, but what's interesting to me is the combination of two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects. So to tie this to our design terms, we can talk about assemblage and collage. Collage is two-dimensional, assemblage is three-dimensional, and those are both compositions or artworks made up of disparate objects and materials worked into a compositional whole. So really interesting balance of both of those techniques here. Moving on, let's talk about David Henry Brown. So this artist does these really unique and interesting self-portraits using makeup on himself, also attaching objects to himself, and then making a photograph as the end product. So some really interesting things going on here in terms of contrast and juxtaposition, where there are large differences between elements. I can see that in the Cut Up magazine cover on top of the artist's face. I would probably say this image has very low harmony. So this is more like dissonance, where parts of the image are almost fighting each other for attention. And I think that's part of what makes this so striking is that we don't really know where or what the focal point is because there's kind of these two different faces mixing together. This work is also a good example of texture where we're thinking about the surface quality of what we see. I'm really noticing the smeared toothpaste and face paint here. Uh, it feels pretty gross and shocking to look at. Now, one interesting thing about digital images is that texture is always simulated. It's not like a painting where we'd be able to actually feel the different textures. It's just an illusion. Next, we can talk about Alma Hazer's work. So some interesting things happening here in terms of contrast and juxtaposition uh, between these photographic images in the background and the sort of geometric origami shapes on top. So in these images, one subject's face is always obscured by a duplicate photo folded up into a three-dimensional object. I think part of what makes these so striking is that on the one hand, you have harmony in terms of color in all three respects, the hue, the brightness, the saturation all match to the point where if you were to squint your eyes enough, nothing looks out of place in the image. But then you can see that real lack of harmony in the obscured faces, which is exactly where your brain wants to be looking. We could also look at the asymmetrical balance of this two-person portrait. So it's almost symmetrical, but the figure on the left is smaller than the figure on the right. But that's balanced out by the placement of the folded photo over the face. So this gives the left side of the image more perceived weight. And even though there's not compositional symmetry, there's still a balance to it. Let's move on and talk about Sandeep Kyriakos. We can see uh, some more interesting examples of mixing two-dimensional collage and three-dimensional assemblage. Also good examples of working with color. So on the left, we see a cool monochromatic color palette where blue is pretty much the only hue, and we're just seeing different values and saturation levels of it. On the right, there's a warm monochromatic color palette where the hue is mostly red. So just to reiterate, the hue is the name of the color. So here, the background hue is yellow. It's a very saturated yellow because it's not mixed with gray, white, or black. I'm also really interested in what's going on here in terms of scale. It's kind of hard to get a sense of whether these are miniatures or life-size figures because of the relationships of their size to the whole composition. Okay, so those are just a few touch points for some of this week's example artists and design vocabulary. Please take some time on your own to go through, make sure you read all the vocabulary terms, and take a look at some of those additional artists that we didn't get a chance to talk about. I promise they'll be interesting, helpful, and inspiring for your work this week. Good luck!